Good afternoon, DHS. I'm Lucas, and it's time for another weekly school newscast. This time brought to you by the members of Key Club. Jacqueline Devlin and Spencer will be joining us later in the newscast. For the third time in about a month, a threat has been made against the school district. Each time a threat is made, school administrators and local law enforcement say it forces them to decide whether it is safe enough for staff and students to come to school, a decision that they sometimes have to make while school buses are in the process of picking up students in the morning. So how is the decision made? How safe do you feel? And what's the latest in the investigation? Here's Tanner Guthrie for more. For the third time Wednesday morning, a threat against the Donovan School District was called into the Donovan City Police Department. Well, we had our third threat. Sounded like it was probably from the same individual as the first two. And the routine is becoming all too familiar for staff and students. Parents are notified by a school reach call while administrators and law enforcement begin the process of securing each school building in the district. Superintendent Jennifer Snyder told us that the decision to keep school in session is based on the safety of the students. It is purely, are our students safe? Do we feel like that we have everything covered that needs to be covered so that our students are safe and our staff? Dr. Snyder says while the threats are a disruption to the normal school day and the learning process at school, there is another factor that bothers her even more. One of the most troubling things that we've that bothers us about this whole situation is that it causes some of our younger students to, to be scared, and, and that's a concern as well. It causes undue stress and alarm in our staff. It causes not only just disruption, but uh, it's, it's just the mental anguish that it causes as well. Students at the high school we spoke with say that they feel safe and don't worry too much about coming to school on days when a threat's made. I do. They have police all over the place and lock all the doors and, you know, Yes, I usually feel safe because it hasn't happened in the past, so I don't see why it would happen now. One of the big questions from students has been, if I miss school, will it count against my attendance? Simply put, the answer is yes. A part of our attendance uh, policy and requirements for us is that Department of Ed Elementary and Secondary Education requires us to collect attendance. Uh, so if a student is not here, they're have to be counted absent. There's no way around that. Um, what we are doing though is that when we keep attendance we've asked all secretaries and, and administrators to mark the absence as uh, absent due to threat so that we know what uh, why that student is absent. Meanwhile Officer Dixon tells us that they have asked federal investigators with the Secret Service to help them tracking down the caller. If and when a person is charged for making the threats, Dixon says they will be facing some pretty serious charges. They will face some pretty serious felony charges for terroristic threatening, and it is very possible that we will try to get the federal, the ATF, to take it federal. In our conversation with Dr. Schneider, we found that the decision to keep school in session is very personal for her as well. And you know, um, I know that I don't have students that are, attend here that are my own children, but um, as an administrator, it's, it's hard to, maybe from where you're sitting, to think, oh gosh, you know, she just thinks, <laughs> she doesn't, you know, doesn't uh, think that it's our students or me or affecting me, but um, when I think about our students and our staff, I care about them very deeply, and I don't know if, if I could live with myself if something did happen to one of our students because of a decision I made. So what can you do to help? If they have any information about a possible suspect, hear somebody bragging about it or anything, please let us know at the police department. For Current River Broadcasting, I'm Tanner Guthrie. In the next week, a new security system will be installed at each of the schools so that anyone coming into the school will have to press a button to buzz the office and be allowed into the main entrance. Seniors have 15 days of school left and that means there are a bunch of deadlines that are starting to pile up. There are a handful of scholarships that are still available to seniors. The deadline for the Billy Yates Hearts for the Arts scholarship is today. It is open to any senior going into the arts such as music, visual, and performance arts. The Crawford Price Memorial Scholarship application is also due today and is for any senior who has shown livestock at the fair as an FFA or 4-H member. Finally, the PEO scholarship is for a junior girl who has at least a 3.4 GPA on a four-point scale. See the counselors for an application, which is due May 9th. Permission slips for the trip to Registration Rock at TRC next Tuesday are also due today. You will also need money for lunch the day of the trip. See the counselors if you have any questions. The countdown is on for the number of days and remediation hours left for, me for seniors as well. There are 15 school days and about 40 hours of remediation left. And one final note for seniors, any fines or fees that you owe need to be taken care of before graduation practice. 
You will not be allowed to participate if you don't. Here's Jacqueline with some club news and announcements. Thanks, Lucas. The Drama Club will be taking a trip to the City Museum in St. Louis on May 7th. Any members wanting to go on the trip need to pick up a permission form from Miss LeBron. Those forms, along with $8, are due to Miss LeBron on Monday the 25th. All art club members that are not in Miss Francis' art classes need to stop by the art room and pick up a class release form from Miss Francis. Art club will be doing glass fusing with Charlene Johns on April 20th. Next up, some project graduation announcements. Permission forms for project graduation are due today. Also, project graduation will be handing out Krispy Kreme orders tomorrow from 10 to 1 at People's Community Bank. Seniors are needed to help sell more donuts around town in Donovan and Apopper Bluff. Contact Ms. Wiggins or Ms. Roark if you can help and earn some last minute credits. And the Harlem Wizards will be here next Saturday and tickets are still available online in the high school office or from Ms. Wiggins. One last mention, the baby and kindergarten pictures for the yearbook need to be picked up from Ms. Griffith. In meetings for next week, student council will be meeting before school on Wednesday and speech and drama after school. On Friday, FCA will meet before school at 7.20 in the gym. Here's Devlin with the week sports. Thanks, Jacob. It's been a quiet week in sports here at the high school. The baseball game on Monday against Kosh was canceled, and the team will be taking part in a Malden tournament today and tomorrow. The softball team had two games this week. On Monday, they traveled to Corning and won that game by a score of 19-8. On Tuesday, they played Neelyville and lost that game by a score of 6-2. They have a game here after school against Dexter. Good luck to the Donuts. The golf team traveled to Bloomfield yesterday and is taking part in the Popper Bluff Tournament today. That's it for sports this week. Here's Spencer with your weekend weather forecast. Thanks, Devlin. The weather this weekend is looking nice. It will be partly sunny each day with a high of 70 degrees on Saturday and then as high as 75 on Sunday. Starting off the week on Monday will be partly sunny and 77 degrees. That's our newscast for this week. Joining us next week will be the members of FBLA will be doing the newscast. Have a great weekend.